Sean McBride has been a part of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese for a long time. He just recently became their Secretary of Communications, and he's kept in touch with us from the time of Bishop Darcy's second diagnosis, giving us updates from the bishop and his family. And we have Sean on the phone with us now. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight, Sean. We appreciate it. Uh, first of all, what are some of your recollections of the bishop? Well, uh, Ms. Melissa, good evening, and, and thanks very much for, for having me on tonight. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much time you have, but because I could go on and on <laughs> with, with stories I have. Um, you know, it started very early, my recollection, uh, with Bishop Darcy, because he brought the televised mass uh, to Fort Wayne uh, from Boston, and um, he got my father involved with it uh, from day one as the associate producer, which... For me, on a very personal note, because my mother was disabled, uh, was just such a godsend. And, uh, you know, that ministry uh, remained so near and dear uh, to my family um, that when my father's health began to wane, um, I, I kind of took over for them. It's been 16 years for me now, and, uh, and now my sons are, are actively involved with it uh, as well. Um, you know, Bishop Darcy is He's such a champion of the faith. He is, he's got an iron will, and, and I say that because he has an iron will, because he has an iron faith, and his faith in the Lord is just incredible and remarkable. And it, and it shows itself in his love for the people. He just has a charism about himself um, that exuded that when you had a conversation with Bishop Darcy, it was you and he and nothing more, and, and he just made you feel like you were the center of the universe when you were talking to him. And, and I know everyone feels that way, but, you know, unless you truly know him, and, I, and Melissa, I know you do, um, you would hearken to that because it's absolutely true. He was a man of deep faith, uh, deep love, and, um, and yes, we're sad today, but overjoyed as well because we honestly believe um, – you know, that uh, he's talking about Notre Dame football with Jesus right now. <laughs> yes, uh, he certainly loved that, and uh, as well as the uh, the Red Sox, as his sister said. Uh, you know, he did have such a warm personality and was a remarkable man. And when I spoke with him in Boston, uh, he told me how much he valued his relationships with non-Catholics in our community. Uh, I am not a Catholic myself. In fact, we had a, a joke, an ongoing joke, that I was his favorite Lutheran. Uh, but he he, he, he valued his relationships, and he worked to build those relationships with Jewish people, with Lutherans, with other uh, denominations. Uh, he just was a real tireless worker on behalf of the Catholic Church, but also on behalf of the entire community. Well, he was, Melissa. And you bring up a really good point, because we're all God's children, and we're all rooted in, 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 uh, in God's love for each and every one of us. He understands that, and he respects that, and he knows in everyone's heart um, that, uh, you know, there's an old saying, you know, if in fact I don't like somebody, it's just because I don't know them well enough. Well, <laughs> he understood that, and he strove on a daily basis to get to know more and more people within and outside of the Catholic faith, because, uh, again, he sees love in everyone's heart, and, and he wants it to grow, and uh, he wants to expound upon that, and he was... You know, his first love was that of being a priest, and uh, everyone will tell you that. Administering uh, the sacraments and, and again, reaching out uh, to people of all faiths and, um, and being a beacon of love, that was Bishop Darcy. Yes, and he encouraged people who disagreed with the Catholic Church on a number of issues to not return anger with anger, but to return anger with love. Uh, we talked about that as well in Boston, uh, and you are so right to, to characterize uh, that part of his life as just a, a love uh, that just exuded and surrounded him, and I think that's what drew people to him. Um, I know there haven't been any funeral arrangements announced. Uh, I remember when the former Bishop McManus passed away, he was in Chicago, um, but Bishop Jar Darcy chose to, to come back to Fort Wayne. And uh, so what kind of uh, thing is normal in this type of a situation in terms of funeral arrangements? And we know South Bend is to be considered as well. Well, you're exactly right. And South Bend is certainly um, near and dear to his heart. Yes. And he absolutely loves the people in South Bend. Um, and so it, um, it, it's a little bit tricky because uh, the hyphen in our diocese with yeah. South Bend and Fort Wayne. Um, but I 
think, and, and of course the, the plans are still evolving and, and, and setting into concrete here, but it will probably be a two to possibly three day uh, schedule of events and um, with a culmination of a funeral mass here at the uh, Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception uh, in Fort Wayne. And um, so I would, I would uh, encourage everyone to uh, keep an eye on the diocesan website and, of course, your team and, and the local media everywhere, Melissa, will, will be up to speed as, as soon as those details are made available because we know it, uh, it's probably going to be a well-attended uh, event or event, I should say. Yes, it's certain to be so. And uh, Sean, we certainly appreciate your being with us tonight and sharing your recollections of Bishop Darcy with us and uh, allowing those of us who don't know him to know him just a little bit more. Thanks so much, Sean. You're welcome.